104.7 The K, Mike the Intern, Jay Stevens in the studio today for Dark Side of the Stream, episode 188. This week we celebrated the documentary series on Max called Soulsville USA yeah, Stacks man. Records. So, soul music. So uh, I know this isn't something, Jay, I, I'm a huge fan of soul music mm -hmm. and I've been very vocal about that in my time here at the cave. We'll get into that in a minute, but did you learn anything? Dude, I loved it. Yeah. You did? I actually loved this documentary. Yeah. It was so badass. It was it? cool, man. I mean, it you, was cool because I loved like grassroots coming dude, from nothing, figuring it out and perfect. making it. And then the harder part, getting <laughs> screwed by getting the man, screwed, not then, just once. But and then rebuilding twice, rebuilding again, and like, getting screwed by the man. Yeah, they got screwed so much. But if it wasn't for Stax Records, man, we wouldn't have a lot of great soul music. Of course, when you talk about soul music, you're talking about Motown. Um, you can also talk about Atlantic Records. You could also talk about the competitor for Stax Records in Memphis, um, and that would be High Records. And those guys are the ones that produced all of uh, Al Green's uh music um what a hotbed on there. What a hot oh, dude, down Memphis. there dude right crazy and and they did an incredible job about talking about like not only like the social economical climate that was happening in memphis you know what was going on in uh obviously the country civil the war 50s, uh, the, uh, i mean uh, the civil, civil rights, rights movement. movement yeah um just there's so much but yeah stacks records starts because this guy and his sister decide they want to go into business together jim and estelle and they have one building which is a uh, record uh record shop and then next door would be a, a recording what studio. a great idea so badass right it's no I mean, brainer it's something we <laughs> I would love to do no brainer currently yeah, yeah that's actually sounds current, like if we if we won the lottery you, you that's what mike would do yeah so just put my records out there for sale and then we'd start recording people um currently there actually is a uh record store slash label that does soul music in the country and they do a lot of new uh soul records their their label is coal mine records but they're based out of a record store in ohio called uh plaid room records so it's kind of like plaid room is the same is kind the of thing? same kind okay. of setup as stacks did and it works there's so many great well, new soul i, bands out I just there. loved the fact that they you know this is in the peak of like segregation and stuff like that and that these guys were a, a, a white brother and sister and yeah. they're Hey, come on in. You can listen to records for free. Dance in the store, dance in the street. Yeah. And it was like, it was all cool, man. But like first, they didn't, they weren't on that train of all that, uh, what was going especially on. Especially being in the South. You yeah. know what I mean? And we'll get into that. They were that cool with the everybody, man, they as were. it should be. But it didn't start out that way. And we'll tell you how Stacks Records actually started next. Dark Side of the Stream on 104.7 The K. Four point seven, the cave. Mike, the intern, and Jay Stevens back in the studio. It is Dark Side of the Stream, episode one eighty eight. Stacks Records, Soulsville, USA. So Jim and Estelle, they start this business together, and basically they start selling records. And Jim starts producing gospel and country, country records, yeah. uh, and bluegrass, really. And um, eventually, someone uh, came in there and said, "Hey, can we?" And at first he's like, no, 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 yeah, no, no, no. yeah we're not. I don't doing... know anything about that. Stuff. I don't know nothing about that. I don't type know of anything music. about that stuff. Um, and it was originally known as Satellite Records, um, but basically they started recording a little bit, and uh, eventually one of the staff producers, um, Chips More Momin, kind of says, "Hey, man, <laughs> I know you want to do some record, like some, you know, uh, country music, yeah. roots music, whatever." Um, but eventually, uh, Rufus Thomas, uh, got in with, uh, Mr. Stewart and Rufus basically sold him on the fact that you should be doing, um, Said, look, so, there's a lot of talent in this yeah. neighborhood, basically. Right. So, Guys would like just roll up. Yeah. And it, it could just have been anybody. And, and you got high Rufus school and kids. his daughter that have a hit for him, uh, cause I love you. And then when that hit and it got picked up by Atlantic, Jim was like, okay, soul music. <laughs> this is what we're you doing. You want to come in here? And and set up, bring and, whoever you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's just, Guys so, would just roll yeah. up, and so that's how you get Booker Dude. T and the MGs. Which, by the way, see Cropper is a Missouri boy, and all those guys just just getting to see because again, you had a bunch of house bands. Um, you know, we've saw we did the documentary, uh, Sanding in the Shadows of Motown. Those guys were the house house bands, and the dudes Motown. down in Muscle Shoals, yeah, Muscle Shoals, mm -hmm. the Swampers. Um, but but with Stacks, you basically had uh, Booker T and the MGs as the house band, and then um. 
later on you would have the barquets who were the like touring house band who went out on the road with otis redding but uh 17 years old right yeah, right you know, like literally just they graduate and they go on tour man road. with otis redding like just, what what an incredible what? story uh we'll get to we'll talk about otis redding specifically next dark side of the stream on 104.7 the k One hundred four point seven, the K. Mike, the intern, Jay Stevens, back in the studio. It is Dark Side of the Stream, episode one eighty eight. Soulsville, USA, stacks records on Max. So uh, basically, um, we've talked a little bit about the house band, which was Booker T and the MGs, and that involved Steve Cropper, Donald Duck Dunn, who is arguably one of the best, in my opinion, soul bass players of all time. Yeah, and it was a, some um, white dudes, some so black dudes. It a was, couple of those guys would yeah. go be a part of the house band for uh, Saturday Night Live years oh, later. Oh, man, wow. Um, but uh, there's some just incredible music that came out of that. Um, but essentially, uh, one of the biggest stars early on, and their you know their their guy was Otis Redding. The and farmer. He <laughs> just, that's actually, you know what? Thou, I'm glad you brought that up because I thought that, that was one of the parts of the story that I almost teared up on when uh, Steve Cropper was talking about after the plane crashed in right. Madison, he went out, going there. out to his farm and just sitting there and just being so upset going, I should have spent more time here. Yeah. Like how did I not come and see what and this guy does? Late. Yeah. It's too late. But I mean, again, Otis was in his twenties when he died. Gosh, man. And you, you don't think about when you're in your twenties, you don't think like, I really need to spend more time with my friends because you never know. Cause you, that, you're invincible, you know, and it's not until you turn in well, your late these, 30s, the, early 40s, uh, you're uh, like, uh, oh, wait a minute. These I, small I can planes, dude, these small planes, man, it's, they got a track record. Another situation dudes out, in man. which a couple guys got lucky because they didn't fit on the plane <sighs> and they were waiting for their buddies to come back and pick them up. And that just never happened. So that story was horrific. But to see how uh, Otis Redding just like how he honed in on his craft how he didn't really know how to read music. He would go in there and kind of just, it would all be in his head. And he would kind of say, I want it to sound yeah, something like this. this. How I do this is it. the vibe. Yeah, um, hey, man. What was really sad was after the whole bank incident, which was the final nail in the coffin for Stax Records, and <laughs> we don't have time to get into that, but how they had so many um, tapes of rehearsals and just music that probably have, have not seen the light of the day that they yeah. just basically had to turn over for sale when they uh, got uh, shut down. It was just a terrible, man, horrific situation. But uh, again, there was a lot of good that did come out of this. And we'll talk about some of that next dark side of the stream on 104.7 The Cave. Mike, the intern, Jay Stevens, back in the studio. It is Dark Side of the Stream, episode 188, Soulsville, USA, Stacks Records. So um, it was so cool to watch the uh, journey of Isaac Hayes and yes. his partner. Um, Going from like David songwriter, Porter. dude, like producer, arranger, and then he's like, I, I want to man. Again, like Isaac and David, like those dudes. Chef, they, baby, they, chef. Yeah, but I mean, golly, those Black Moses, man. Th those dudes, they, they put her just so many records and this was after atlantic basically Screwed had them. taken all of their because to have a su successful record company you got to have a hit right so they get that big hit with uh um carl and uh, carl and rufus and then eventually uh atlantic's like ah, actually that's our record and our artist now up until this point Dude, so they I have know. to go back and do, do it and again recreate the catalog and with the help of isaac and david they just churn out so much music i mean it was like a damn factory in there but they weren't just churning out garbage it was all great yeah. stuff and some of the players on these again you are you just it just blows my mind but um they they had hits from otis redding of course the sam and dave stuff carla thomas burker t barquets albert king and um, then when they talked about going to europe for the first oh, time that was a really cool story they were and, like we'd never yeah. been over there we didn't Booker know it and they got to go over there and it's packed and yeah. there's tons of people enjoying it and there was like no segregation they're like what yeah man what a just trip a, what a trippy time an man incredible trip and then they would do all this they break from atlantic they'd get all their own things they'd have i can't remember what the it was volt records was the other yeah. they had they would work as an independent label do really really good stuff and then eventually 
got into some issues with a banker that worked at a bank in uh was it memphis that was doing some shady stuff uh, well, and they kind of got too big yeah. like they kind of blew up and got so big and it wasn't that family atmosphere anymore maybe it was more of a business now yeah. and then some guys are starting to leave it wasn't as fun anymore yeah. um but uh yeah it it was obviously one of those situations where they got screwed again. Um, but I really enjoyed Al Bell um, being a part of yeah. it too because uh, uh, he was a DJ in the beginning that just happened to be like in on the scene. Went along, and was like, hey, be- can work for me, be an promotions, AR guy? Yeah, became yeah. vice president. Became, I mean, I was... Hey, and at one point when they were trying to... When, when CVS basically screwed him over for the second time because he wouldn't sign the deal and, and get them the money... They basically offered him everything. They basically were like, you're going to be the richest African-American man in the country. He said, no, didn't want wow. that, them to control it. Wow. It was just unbelievable what he was willing to do and what he wasn't willing to do. Either way, we'll talk about our reviews next. Dark Side of the Stream on 104.7 The K. Mike, the intern, Jay Stevens, back in the studio. Dark Side of the Stream, episode 188. So how many seven-inch records would you give oh, this documentary? I'll probably go four and a half. Oh, yeah, yeah I was pretty happy with it. I'm glad you that know? you like soul music, and I'm glad you were able to learn something about it. Yeah, yeah, I just, you know, that, that whole time, man, it's just uh, for, for people to not play along with the narrative around the country of all this racial stuff and segregation. And it's like, no, white guys and black guys can get together and, and create amazing music and it was cool, man. Interracial band. Yeah. Didn't matter. Dude. Just incredibly talented yeah. people. Just um, cool cats, man. man. I, you know, Hot Buttered, Hot Buttered Soul is probably one of my favorite soul records of all time. I mean, Walk On from Isaac Hayes, that song is just like, it, it, there's no, there's a few epics in my life where I hear that song and it's just like everything stops. And just incredibly talented individual, incredibly talented record label. Watch that documentary. I would give it a solid five. And that's just wow, because I'm a soul nice. Yeah, you are a soul uh, Jed, Jay, what are we watching next week? Well, since we were on HBO Max with this one, I saw a teaser for another documentary. I figured, why not? Why not talk about more musicians that have some ups and downs? Uh, Fallen Idols. Nick Carter and uh, his brother, the other Carter brother. <laughs> I forget his name. Backstreet Boy guy and his other brother, both pop stars. and. One of them is dead now. And probably it's how money can turn you sour, I guess. Yeah. Right. And uh, being involved. Money in, doesn't fix everything. Money yeah, and no. fame doesn't fix and everything. Being a childhood star also doesn't help. Right. We'll talk about that either. again. It's always well, good to go down the childhood star keep path. Keep throwing these great documentaries our way. I guess <laughs> Can't have a winner every like, time, yeah, Mike. So, Mike so, no, no, no. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about some dirt bags. Who knows? Way, may- <laughs> you can watch us do this on Facebook Live or YouTube every Thursday yeah, maybe. 9 a.m. Listen to us do it um, 9 a.m. or 6 p.m. on my show or Jay's show or uh, for free as a podcast on our 104.7. We're having a student at your house. No one's taking us up on that yet. No, I haven't. <laughs> Just, we'll uh, come and watch with you. We'll, we'll, sit, we'll sit on the couch. You sit in the middle. <laughs> me and Mike on the edge. We'll watch the documentary together, and then we'll do the dark side. Hey. I like that. If you're a lady, especially. Yeah, maybe a lot. Get Jay Mike in trouble. Get Mike fun. in trouble. Either here. way, uh, Mike the intern, that's uh, Jay Bananas. Thanks for watching. <laughs> it starts out of the stream on 104.7 The Cave. Okay. <laughs>